Christmas night, when mystic stars shone bright, a wistful blind man moved in sleep and dreamed that he had sight. That night when shepherds heard an angel choir near, a deaf man stirred in slumber spell and dreamed that he could hear. Child of healing, child of hope, take the things that hurt us most and with your touch they'll be redeemed holy child of christmas dreams Stall. A king slept through the cold. A cripple turned his twisted limbs and dreamed that he was whole. He dreamed that night when o'er the bay, young Mary rose. To lead a lonesome leper smiled in sleep and dreamed that he was clean. Child of healing, child of hope, take the things that hurt us most, and with your touch they'll be. And Roger's heart feels much better. <laughs> you'll get that. If you don't, I'll tell you after church. You know, uh, if you'll turn to your Bibles to Luke chapter 2, verses 28 through 32. But before I read our opening text, and I give the pastor a moment to take a breath before I give this up, I've got a confession to make. But I'm not alone. Because I know, I know for a fact 
Some of you are just as guilty as I am. But I want to confess for myself. I've been unfaithful this week. I went to a different church. Oh, no, I know, I know. Here I'm above in, in front of you in this in this sanctuary, and I went to a different church Monday, and I watched a production of Handel's Messiah. And I know some of you were there because I saw some of you. But I know some of you probably beat me there because you were there Sunday instead of Monday. But what an amazing opportunity that we have to reach out in our community. And we have two of the stars right here in our church today. Uh, not to bring any uh, light or anything, but uh, Sarah and Beth, they gave an amazing performance, along with Holly George from our Clinton Church, and along with many other brothers and sisters of other denominations and faiths that went and provided uh, beautiful music and, and reciting of the word that if it doesn't touch your heart, there's not much is going to touch your heart. It was the 40th uh, different time that they've done it here in Harrison, uh, having to skip last year. And it's an amazing opportunity if you get the chance, as Beth and Sarah got to, to, to sing and be a part of it. Or if you just do like I do, I can't carry a tune in a bucket, but I can be in a seat listening and getting great enjoyment at what God has given us and a blessing it is. Again, what a blessing it is to be in this community of faith what we call brothers and sisters from all over the world, and we get to res- we get to worship the King of the the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ. Turn with me to Luke chapter two, verses twenty eight through thirty two. Luke two twenty eight. Then took he him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For my eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. May the Lord place a blessing on the reading of his word. Thank you, Brother Roger, for reading to us from God's inspired word, and thank you, Beth and Sarah, for that powerful message and song. Jesus is the answer. And Brother Roger, I've got to concur. I was blessed too, though uh, uh, I was thankful that the way uh, the schedules arranged this past weekend that they also live streamed Monday night, <laughs> and so it was uh, it was neat to tune in and to uh, to watch what was uh, unfolding on live stream as well as uh, those who were blessed to get to be there in person. Brothers and sisters, we have an amazing story to share, and that is God's love. Before we dive into God's word, let's let's pray together. Father in heaven. Thank you for this Sabbath. Thank you most of all for Jesus. Somehow, I wished that you could make me disappear and that we could see Jesus and hear him speak to us through your word. My words are feeble and human and have no power, but your word has power to change us. That's what we're asking for today. In Jesus' name, amen. Anybody here like surprises? How about happy surprises? Good surprises. Okay, let me clarify that because uh, life is filled with surprises, but the uh, the ones that are unexpected that put a smile on your face are really neat surprises. And uh, Pastor Dan gave me one this week. 
I think he realizes it too, because we had the privilege of traveling down uh, to Clinton together, and uh, he brought a machine, and it's an amazing machine because you can push a couple of buttons, and all of a sudden you can hear any part of some wonderful books. Maybe you've heard of The Desire of Ages. Uh, maybe you've heard of the great controversy. Maybe you've heard of uh, uh, patriarchs and prophets. And uh, I'm, I'm not naming all of them, but with a few buttons, he can take uh, and jump to whichever page you want to go to. And so we were listening to a particular section that deals with a chapter in the Bible that I don't normally think of in context of the birth of Jesus. But let's travel there for a moment. John chapter 8. Notice with me John chapter 8. And let's listen in to a simple but powerful verse. John chapter 8 and verse 12. John chapter 8 and verse 12, the Bible says, Then spake Jesus unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. I heard one, I heard two amens. These words were not spoken by me or by any pastor. They were spoken by Jesus himself. Let me, let's make sure they've sunk in for a second. I am the light of the world. As we, and I think we all recognize December 25 is not the precise day that Jesus arrived in the manger in Bethlehem. And, let, and yet, ladies and gentlemen, as we reflect on the power and the message of that first advent of our Savior, there are some powerful lessons that God wants to teach us as we look forward to his second advent. Please make no mistake about it. Jesus is coming very soon. Wouldn't it be great if uh, if we are not around for the next December 25 or or even the next Thanksgiving or e wouldn't it be awesome if 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 we were sitting at the feet of Jesus letting him teach us personally the words of life and yet please don't miss what Jesus is saying in this verse I am the light of the world he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness but shall have the light of life and here's the surprise that uh, jumped out of desire of ages it, it says simply in the manifestation of god to his people light had ever been a symbol of his presence. I'll never forget being invited to a location, I won't say the name of the town, but some very nice people wanted me to spend the night. You see, there had been a period of time where they had no home, and uh, I, 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 one Saturday night when they realized they had no home to go to, they asked, would I take them to the local homeless shelter? It was December, and to be candid, it wouldn't have mattered what time of the year, but it just tugged at my heart to load this family up with, with five kids ranging from like 14 months to 14 years and take them all to the local homeless shelter. And so I said, well, I, I, I could do that, but um, I guess if you, uh, if you can endure it, we could just do an indoor camp out right here. 
unfortunately, all I had was a one-bedroom apartment, and so there wasn't a lot of room to play with. But, uh, hey, if you don't mind sleeping on the floor, we'll just have an indoor camp out. And they, their eyes lit up, and uh, the next morning they said, could we do this every Saturday night? And uh, the, the fast forward a few months, and uh, they had secured lodging. It wasn't in the best part of town. But, but I remember the kids saying, now... You can come spend the night with us. Did I mention family of six was sharing that one bedroom apartment with a family of four? And they wanted me to come spend the night with them? I made some feeble excuse that, uh, oh, thank you so much, but I, I, um, uh, I, I don't want to impose. I, I don't need to. And you would have thought I just crushed them. Those kids were so excited that you don't want to come spend the night at our house. I said, oh, no, no, I tell you what, change of plans. If you work it out with your dad, I'll be happy to come. And we'll have an indoor camp out at your place. So I find myself laying on this air mattress on the floor. Air mattress doesn't hold air. And uh, uh, the the pest control hasn't been real effective at uh, reducing the uh, millions of crawly critters that were around. And uh, I, I'm laying there looking out a window that's got bars. Because this is the tough side of town. You could hear what they had nicknamed the ghetto bird going around. It was the police helicopter shining its spotlight up and down the alleys. It's summertime and the electricity goes out. Talk about a dark place. I remember thinking, as dark and scary as this could be, is nothing compared to what our Redeemer did to leave the splendor of heaven and come to this dark planet. Except, brothers and sisters, please don't miss that the light of heaven comes to you, comes to me, so that the darkness of sin can be transformed and erased and we can be made new through His power. In the manifestation of God to his people, light had ever been a symbol of his presence. Can you think of some examples? If you're thinking of creation, you're spot on. At the creative word in the beginning, light had shone out of darkness. Light had been enshrouded in the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night, leading the vast armies of Israel. Light blazed with awful grandeur about the Lord on Mount Sinai. Light rested over the mercy seat in the tabernacle. Light filled the temple of Solomon at its dedication. And can somebody want to hazard a guess what the next example is? If you said Bethlehem, you're absolutely right. Light shone on the hills of Bethlehem when the angels brought the message of redemption to the watching shepherds. Please don't miss the punchline. God is light. And in the words, I am the light of the world, Christ declared his oneness with God and his relation to the whole human family. It was he who at the beginning had caused light to shine out of darkness. He is the light 
of sun and moon and star. He was the spiritual light that in symbol and type and prophecy had shone upon Israel. But not to the Jewish nation alone was the light given. As the sunbeams penetrate to the remotest corners of the earth, so does the light of the Son of Righteousness shine upon every soul. In fact, travel with me to Psalms and notice chapter 112. Psalms chapter 112. Notice verse 4. Psalms 112 and verse 4. Psalms 112 verse 4. Unto the upright there ariseth, what's the next word? Light in the darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteousness. In fact, adding another quote from a different part of Desire of Ages, to those who are seeking for light. Let me stop there for a second. Could that describe all of us? Are we all seeking for God's light? The truth that Jesus offers to those who are seeking for light and who accept it with gladness, the bright rays from the throne of God will shine. In the fields where the boy David had led his flock, shepherds were still keeping watch by night. Through the silent hours, they talked together of the promised Savior and prayed for the coming of the King to David's throne. That's why I want us to journey back to Luke chapter 2. Notice Luke chapter 2. And we've already read some verses, Brother Roger read to us about the dedication of baby Jesus at the temple in Jerusalem. And hopefully you notice verse 32, a light, Luke 2 verse 32, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. But let's back up because this is several days after Jesus' birth. And notice if we back up to Luke chapter 2, notice in verse 9 what the Bible says. Luke 2 verse 9, and lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. And the glory of the Lord shone round about them, speaking of the shepherds, and they were sore afraid. No kidding. If you suddenly had an angel appear to you, that would be a very frightening, humbling experience. And yet notice the words of the angel in verse 10. The angel said unto them, Fear not! For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Oh, once more jumping back to desire of ages. I I, I was touched by some lines that our school teacher asked me to memorize. I tried real hard, but uh, Brother Randy came to my rescue and wrote them down on a three-by-five card. It was a precious experience to watch our, our fellow church members and our students and staff depict various messages from the arrival of Jesus, that first advent. And yet, Miss Teresa, the words you asked me to look at have resonated with me in a very personal way. The heavenly messenger had quieted their fears. He had told them how to find Jesus with tender regard for their human weakness, he had given them time to become accustomed to the divine radiance. Then the joy and glory could no longer be hidden. The whole plain was lightened up with the bright shining of the host of God. Earth was hushed and heaven stooped to listen to that song. Going back to Luke chapter 2, notice verse 12. It says, this shall be a sign unto you. 
Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Oh, that today the human family could recognize that song. Heaven and earth are no wider apart today than when the shepherds listened to that angel's song. Humanity is still as much the object of heaven's solicitude as when common men of common occupations met angels at noonday. Bible quiz. What story is that referencing? Shall we try Abraham feeding the angels as they walk by? At noonday, as they were headed towards uh, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah? How about this one? And, and talked with heavenly messengers in the vineyards. What Bible stories being referenced there? Shall we try Gideon? Who was too scared to thresh the, uh, the grain where he might be discovered, so he's hiding out in the vineyard? Oh, and talked with the heavenly messengers in the fields. Could we try Samson's parents when the angel appeared to them? No, notice if we keep reading. To us, in the common walks of life, heaven may be very near that awesome? Angels from the courts above will attend the steps of those who come and go at God's command. The story of Bethlehem is an exhaustless theme. In fact, travel with me to a couple of verses in Scripture. Notice Romans chapter 11. Let's jump over to Romans chapter 11 and notice verse 33. Romans chapter 11 verse 33. The scripture says, Romans 11 verse 33, Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. Let's let's listen to that heavenly song that w- that we've just been reading about. Let's go to Revelation chapter nineteen. Notice verse six. Revelation chapter nineteen and verse six. The Bible says, "And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters." And as the voice of mighty thundering sang, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. I'm going to put Miss Sarah and Miss Beth on the spot. Isn't that part of Handel's Messiah? Isn't that tucked in there somewhere? Brothers and sisters, God wants to give us a gift of light. This morning. Not just the sunshine that's shining outside, but something that needs to happen inside each of our hearts. Travel with me to Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2, little book of Titus. Notice chapter 2 and verse 13. Titus chapter 2 and verse 13. The Bible says, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, the night that the shepherds sang to the shepherds on the Bethlehem hillside, there were some others that noticed what was going on. I I had not noticed this before. But 
But notice, uh, I, I'm reading from Desire of Ages, page 59. And you know what? I have to back up because there's another, there's another quote I do not want to skip. Can you bear with me for two? I heard one amen. Shall we skip them both? Uh, okay, okay. Uh, the lunch isn't going anywhere, so if we go a few minutes over, um, can, can that uh, be endured today? Praise the Lord. We marvel at the Savior's sacrifice in exchanging the throne of heaven for the manger. The companionship of adoring angels for the beast of the stall. Human pride and self-sufficiency stand rebuked in his presence. Yet this was but the beginning of his wonderful condescension. It would have been an almost infinite humiliation for the Son of God to take man's nature even when Adam stood in his innocence in Eden. But Jesus accepted humanity when the race had been weakened by 4,000 years of sin. Like every child of Adam, he accepted the results of the working of the great law of heredity. What these results were is shown in the history of Jesus' earthly ancestors. He came with, with such a heredity to share our sorrows and temptations and to give us the example of a sinless life. Again, thinking of the gift of light that Jesus offers, travel with us back to that Old Testament promise that was given in Genesis 3.15. Notice Genesis 3.15. If, if you have it hidden in your heart, feel free to say it with me. Genesis 3.15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Promise given after the fall of Adam and Eve, that there would be a Redeemer given. Jesus, our Savior. In fact, let's travel to Isaiah chapter 40. I love this promise in Isaiah chapter 40. And notice with me verse 8. Isaiah chapter 40 and notice verse 8. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. When God makes a promise, he is going to be faithful to keep that promise. He arrived the first time, just as he said. Oh, my friends, he is coming back just like he promised. In fact, if we go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, we read these verses. As I'm turning over there, I got to tell you what happened a while ago. I had the privilege of stopping at our Marshall Church. Little fellow that lives across the street from the church came riding over on his bike. He said, Guess what I have? I said, I I doubt I can figure it out. He said, I have a magic marker factory. You want to see it? I said, sure. So he dashed home and he came back. And he said, what you do is you take this little device and you, he said, my parents wouldn't let me bring the ink over here to church, so I'll just have to tell you what happens. Pour the ink in and then you take this uh, cylinder that's like a sponge, like, a, like an ink uh, cartridge. And drop it down inside. And then he showed me how you put some other things together. And what do you know? You have a homemade 
magic marker. He said, this is yours. I want you to keep it. I said, I can't take your marker. You just made it. He said, no, I can make gazillions more. This one's yours. Guess what color it is? Blue. Homemade. And as I was listening to him tell the steps of how he made this marker and how now any picture could be colored with the color blue with his homemade magic marker, it couldn't help but remind me the steps that our Redeemer is going through so that you and I can be messengers of his light, messengers of his love to help paint a picture of God. To people who need to see him. Can I share one other little goodie? I was visiting somebody a few days ago. And they pulled this off their tree. I don't know if you can see it. It's a pine cone. You amazed at how huge it is? Fit in my shirt pocket. They pulled it off this gigantic pine tree in their front yard. Do you ever feel like this? Tiny, insignificant. And yet, if we are planted by God, There is no limit to what He can do through you to His glory. Big things come in tiny packages. And we need look no further than baby Jesus lying in a manger. And yet, the Redeemer that changed the world, who longs to change you and me. Now, changing you is a miracle, but you have no idea what kind of miracle it is for changing me. Amen? That's the power of God. And that's why as we travel to 1 Corinthians, in chapter 1 and verse 18, We, we listen in. In verse 18, it says, For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, Paul says, verse 17, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. Notice verse 18. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved it is the power of God. Where is the wise? Verse 20. Where's the scribe? Where's the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? Notice verse 23. We preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, unto the Greeks foolishness, but unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. Notice verse 27. God hath chosen the foolish things of the world, To confound the wise. God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty, that no flesh, verse 29, should glory in his presence, but of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. The light of God quoting from Desire of Ages, 
is ever shining amid the darkness of heathenism. Matthew 2 tells the story of the Magi. And it says, as these Magi studied the starry heavens and sought to fathom the mystery hidden in their bright paths, they beheld the glory of the Creator. Seeking clearer knowledge, they turned to the Hebrew Scriptures. Oh, and in the Old Testament, they found the message of the Savior's advent. Excuse me. Can you picture the Magi studying, seeing light? In the Old Testament, they find the Savior's advent more clearly revealed. And the Magi learned with joy that His coming was near and that the whole world was to be filled with a knowledge of the glory of the Lord. The wise men had seen a mysterious light in the heavens upon that night when the glory of God flooded the hills of Bethlehem. Then through dreams, they were instructed to go in search of the newborn prince. Of course, if we run over to Matthew chapter 2, we, we listen to just a sampling of that experience that we've heard many times, of course, that they come to Jerusalem and in verse 2, Matthew 2 verse 2, it says, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are, and are come to worship him. Of course, Herod pretends to be super anxious to find out where Jesus is anyway. Notice in verse 9, the Bible says in, in, in Matthew 2 verse 9, when they had heard the king, they departed and lo, the star, which they saw in the east, went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. And, and when they saw the star, they, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And, and when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped. Yeah. When they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. Miss Teresa, once again, the Lord directed you to assign these lines to me, and they have resonated in some neat ways beneath the lowly guise of Jesus. They recognized the presence of divinity. They gave their hearts to Him as their Savior and then poured out their gifts. But let's bring that story down to today. We are gathered here. How does this story fit with us this morning? The offering from the heart that loves, God delights to honor. Giving it highest efficiency in service for Him. If we have given our hearts to Jesus, 
We also shall bring our gifts to him, our gold and silver, our most precious earthly possessions, our highest mental and spiritual endowments will be freely devoted to him who loved us and gave himself for us. I read a story about a missionary doctor who spent his three-week vacation in a jungle clinic helping to treat a wide assortment of patients. And then the time of his vacation was over, it was time to go home, and so he did. A few days after he leaves, the clinic gets a frantic visit from uh, the family of an individual. Where's the surgeon? Where's the surgeon? We need a surgeon to come take care of our mom. And the, the clinic uh, missionary, the clinic missionary said, sorry, you're too late. Surgeon's already gone home. Hopefully, he'll be back next year. So we can't wait. Come now. You do something. He said, but I'm just a nurse. He said, no problem. Come, come, come right away. Come, come take care of uh, our mom. When, when they get there, this, this dear village lady had an abdominal cyst that had been growing. And thankfully, this nurse was able to draw off six gallons of fluid. The lady felt like a new person and said, thank you. I now have hope. I can get up. I can move around. This is wonderful. And the missionary nurse said, no, it's not. Because it will come back. You do need surgery. And I can't do it. Next year, when the surgeon comes back, you need our first appointment. And as this news is explained to the lady, you can see tears starting to trickle down a whole other year of waiting. And yet... She, she, through the interpreter, said these words to the missionary nurse. I'll be lying here on my back, counting the moons away till he comes again. You say he might come again in a year? I've been waiting seven years. One more year won't be so long, but tell him I'm waiting. I read that story, and and the good news is that she didn't have to wait a year. They were able to get her into a a different clinic not too far away. Um, The short uh, version of the story, they removed a 49-pound cyst. Gave her a brand new lease on life. But as I listened to her reaction, waiting. What are you waiting for? Christ to come? Are you anxious for Jesus to come? Amen. Brothers and sisters, the most urgent message is for us to not delay making sure that Jesus is born in our hearts every single day, that He is first and last and best in our hearts so that we are ready when that day comes that He comes in the clouds of glory. All was joy, peace, and love. Around God's throne in heaven above, then then some one evil exception that, that spoiled God's 
perfection. Satan wanted control to have his way with his evil angels. They will have to pay. Thrown out of heaven. Peace as before. Satan and his angels were not allowed there anymore. The, this poem was handed to me by someone who asked to be kept anonymous and also asked that if I ever shared it, make sure the name Satan was in lowercase letters because he does not deserve the recognition of a capital letter. I said, if I can get the word processor to cooperate, I will, uh, I will, uh, will try that. And of course, the story continues. Satan came to earth. He tempted man to sin. Man became so wicked, Satan seemed to win. Wickedness and evil under the devil's spell. Man refused to believe Noah that for them not all is well. People laughed and ridiculed. They had never seen it rain. For sure, Noah must be crazy. That seemed very plain. The earth was destroyed. Noah's warnings proved true. The people waited. It was too late. Today, how about you? God gave us a rainbow to remind us of the flood. Jesus gave his life for us. He is our sacrifice in blood to a world filled with sin. God from above sent his only son to show man his eternal love. Jesus came when the prophetic time was right to show God's love in glorious light. The perfect Son of God was tormented and killed by a sin-frenzied mob encouraged by priests who pretended to worship God. We are at the closing of this worn-out earth. Many lack love and need the new birth. Unconcerned. Running here and running there, pleasure-seeking, have no thought or care. Jesus is coming. People refuse to hear. They only want a sermon to tickle their ear. Wake up, church. Now is no time to sleep. There's a work to be done to find the lost sheep. Problems on all sides, plagues, fire, floods, and more. We can read what is coming in Matthew chapter 24. Soon we shall see a small dark cloud in the sky. Praise the Lord, it gets closer and brighter. Now we know why. Graves will be opened, all changed in the twinkling of an eye. We will all rise to meet Jesus and tell this earth as it is, Goodbye. Nothing will bring to mind all the trouble we went through. All sin will be gone. A perfect world for me and you. A refining fire will turn all evil to dust. A perfect new world. God is love and we can trust. We will praise the Lord forever. With joy our voices sing. Oh, don't you want to be there to help swell the arches of heaven ring? Let me be very blunt. As we realize on the calendar this is the last Sabbath, 2021. Are you ready for Jesus to come? Now is the time to quietly send that SOS up to heaven and say, Jesus, whatever it takes, make me ready. Help me walk in your light. And help me share it with everyone you bring across my path.
I'm going to ask that you take the next few moments to quietly reflect on the difference that Jesus first coming made so that we can look forward to his second coming. Brother Wiley, God's given you a gift to share with us today. And as we listen to the words of that song, O holy night, may we rededicate our hearts to be ready on that glorious day. Father in heaven, we're about to hear this song. But I can't look into anyone's heart. I I would like to think that we are all committed to you and ready to spend eternity with you in heaven. But if there's even just one who needs to take this moment to say, Lord, come in and wash my heart clean and pure and give me a new start. Shine your light into my heart. Please help us to say yes, Lord just now. Amen. I sing this song to the honor and glory of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining, till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. A thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices, for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Fall on your knees, oh, hear the angel voices, oh, no. When Christ was born, O night divine, O night divine. Would you stand with me as we go to God in prayer? The loving Father in heaven, thank you so much that you would leave heaven and be born as a little baby. Thank you for shining the glorious light of your love into our hearts. And we are asking today that as we are standing in your presence, that that light will not only transform us, but shine through us to brighten others as we eagerly await your second coming. We're praying, Lord, that you would use us through the power of your Holy Spirit 
to spread the good news to everyone who will listen. And please come soon to take us home. In Christ's name, amen. Thank you.